Hey, what's going on? This is Edwin Vereen from WOBL, WDLW Sports, I-90 Sports, and the Sports Bros Podcast. And you're listening to Tapped In with Tony. Welcome back to Tapped In with Tony. I am your host, Tony Bogan. Tonight, joining us is assistant Bethany College men's basketball coach, Danny Zuchak. Danny, thank you for joining the program. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Um, let's first start with uh, your background. Where are you from initially? So I'm from Ripman, Ohio. Um, went to Ripman High School, graduated there in 2017. So still fairly young in, you know, in basketball. But, um, you know, six years ago, feels like a really, really long time now. So I'm starting to get up there a little bit, feel like. And then, um, so I played played basketball there, had a decent career, um, played collegiately, made a couple stops, but finished my last three years at Finlandia University, Upper Peninsula, Michigan. So pretty unique school, only about 350, 400 students, and it actually just shut down this past spring. So my college basketball career is pretty unique. I mean, not a lot of people had the path to um, – you know, playing college like I did, but I think it's something that benefited me in the long run. It's just a cool story to tell. Gotcha. Can you expand on that uh, path a little bit more after, say, after you graduate Rittman, you initially mm-hmm. committed? So, yeah, yeah, I played at four schools, actually. So I had a hard time latching on and kind of figuring everything out. Um, I played at Defiance, Kent State, Tuscaroras, and Franciscan. So, 90% of it was just me kind of being immature, not knowing how to navigate through things, didn't take accountability, focus on the wrong stuff. But some of it, too, was bad fit. So I'd say about 90 95% was kind of on me. And then the rest of it was just bad fit, bad situation, stuff like that. So um, I don't regret anything that's happened. You know, it's all a learning experience. I think overall it's helped me be able to help others in their recruiting process with AAU. And also I think it's made me a better coach and re- especially at the recruiting aspect because I've been through it, you know, a few times myself coming out of high school and transferring three times. I've been through, you know, four recruiting processes. So I've seen what I like, what I don't like, what works, what doesn't work, that sort of stuff. So I have a pretty unique perspective on, um, you know, just college basketball in general and the recruiting process. Even though, I mean, some people might look at it as a red flag. People have told me they understand why I would do all that. You know, why not just finish school, graduate, you know, that stuff. But I think overall it's helped me become a better person, better coach. And I think, you know, it's just a cool story to tell, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I know the transfer portal um, has definitely been going crazy with, especially with COVID, you've got. There are several college football players that are playing on their third different school mm-hmm. or different school. Sometimes when you commit somewhere, eventually it isn't the right fit. So you have to go somewhere that fits for you. Right. Absolutely. And the COVID year has only made the transfer portal um, even crazier. So I'm curious what it'll look like in two, three years when uh, you know everyone with COVID years is done with their eligibility. Absolutely. Um, did you play your basketball career during the COVID year? Because I know COVID had an impact, especially during the end of 2020 and going on into the 21 season when some schools didn't know, would they be playing basketball? Are they going to cancel things and all the chaos? Then. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so my fourth year, I got a medical waiver when I was early in college. So when I was um, a junior, that's when the COVID year happened. So during that we essentially didn't do any practicing, any team related activities from the beginning of the semester until about late January. Then we practiced for about one week, then went and started playing a, our season. So we played a 10 game season and I, I think maybe 11 or 12 games actually, but our season from the beginning of practice to our last game was only like five or six weeks. So it was a pretty wild experience that year. Gotcha. And especially with uh, what I don't know what level of the school was at when you were on, but I know Division One, it was pretty, you guys probably didn't, presumably didn't have the the advantages that the D1 schools had. Correct. We were a Division Three in a 
not a greatly funded division three either. So it was, um, you know, just playing anyone we can, whenever we can sort of thing. Absolutely. And especially now that that's hopefully past us, um, what got you into, what, what's got you into coaching after your uh, playing career ended? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I always knew I wanted to coach in some regard. Um, my dad coach, I mean, he coached all the, my brother's youth league stuff, coach a little bit of high school and AAU. So, you know, just being a little kid, youngest of three older brothers, saw that growing up and it was always thought it was pretty cool. Um, a lot of my family coach too. I have a couple cousins who were head high school co- coaches on the girls side. My cousin's um, assistant coach at Oberlin College. So, I mean, I just always been around coaching. It's always been something that's interested me. And I've always thought a little bit differently about basketball. I always critically thought a little bit more and looked for like, the right right answer i guess in some ways or like why are we doing this or that so i think it was just something that came naturally to me and um when i was 19 i started coaching aau i was coaching freshman boys which i was completely in over my head on you know it was just really overwhelming had really no idea what was going on but i felt like it was something i could really invest in you know to improve on myself and to help others and do it the right way so ever since then Whenever I've been home in the spring and summer, I've been coaching AAU. So I did 15U one year, 16U the following year. Then the last four years now I've done 17U. So the big thing with 17 is helping players the recruiting process. Um, in my first, so without work, my first three graduating classes, over 20 guys play at the next level. So, you know, like 99% of that is just because I've coached good players. So they make, you know, me look good helping them with recruiting and having successful teams, but um, I've just done everything I can to network with other coaches, market them well, help them through the recruiting process. But yeah, all in all, like 99% of it was all of them just because they're really, really good players. Gotcha. And uh, how is it like as a coach, like compared to playing ball, how do you see things like as, as a coach and how does that uh, help you guys as far as like the teams you coached? over the past few years? I know you said you coached 15U, 16U, and 17U. Yeah, I mean, being a coach and a player, I mean, the perspective is a lot different. But the big problem I had coaching my first couple of years was I just wanted to go out there and do it for them. I didn't really understand, like, why would you do that? I would have done this. But once you kind of disconnect, you kind of, like, see it from their perspective a little bit more and you're a little bit more relatable. So um, I understand what play, how players think a little bit more, what they – and you know what they respond well to what they don't respond well to how they enjoy practicing because there's a lot of old school coaches and it's not necessarily the wrong way to do things but they just think a very different way that they want to you know conduct practices somehow i mean like you think like bobby knight with the indiana hoosiers just kind of like demoralizing guys super tough all that stuff and um you know i just try and look at when i coach like okay if i was a player how would I want this to be conducted? And I think that keeps everything in perspective too, you know, to keep the players not necessarily happy, but engaged and feel like it's productive, but also from a coaching perspective, getting done what we need to get done. Absolutely. And uh, what are your thoughts on the AAU circuit uh, in general as a coach? Because I know usually after, after kid will get done with their winter season, then the AAU season goes through the spring and the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a ton of flaws. The culture of AAU basketball in general is pretty bad. I mean, especially in the last few years, it's become really oversaturated. I think now, instead of there being a million teams, now everyone's kind of chasing to be in a circuit. And quite frankly, like, if you're outside Adidas, Under Armour, Nike's primary circuit, and I guess the Hoop Group circuit as well, the circuits don't do a ton typically. Not saying that they're necessarily a waste of time, but they're not – kind of takes away from the how special a circuit is. So I think the culture of it's pretty bad right now. Overall, just too many teams, coaches try to steal other players, um, unorganized. I mean, every spring and summer, it seems like there's more and more videos circulating about fans fighting refs, refs fighting coaches, coaches fighting other coaches. So, I mean, the culture side of it needs a lot of work. And it's going to be hard to do that because there's no – um organization that really oversees all that now the aau 
is an organization, but these AAU tournaments aren't really affiliated with the AAU. So it's kind of the wild west. But at the end of the day, I mean, AAU is really special, um, especially as you get into high schools, you get to play against some of the best players in the country. You get to get recruited. You get to play with other really good players. And the environment of AAU is just so much different than high school for a ton of reasons. I mean, you can talk all day about the differences. I mean, I know it's probably split right down the middle why kids enjoy AAU more than high school, despite the culture of it being so poor, generally speaking. There's obviously extremities for better or worse, but um, yeah, I mean, AAU is still really special. If I didn't think it was beneficial to the game, I wouldn't do it still. Absolutely. And I know that there are like there are a lot of showcase events that I think there need to be some more around the Cleveland area because yes, absolutely. Yeah, Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Georgia, Florida. And I know that there's one at a Sports Force Park always over the summer in Sandusky where some of the high school teams in, in the Cleveland area, they'll mm-hmm. play up there against some of the Michigan schools and there'll even be some of the big time coaches going up there and doing some scouting. Right. Absolutely. And um, you coach it. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask you this. Um, what's the best advice you could give as far as like recruiting, as far as like for any junior or incoming senior, incoming junior who want to, to for them to get the best way to navigate the recruiting process? Because I know there are a lot of kids that want, obviously every kid, wants to go the highest level they can, but mm-hmm. see that not all the kids can make it to D1. There are kids that will be at D2, D3, JUCO, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think one thing that's important is having an updated highlight tape available. I mean, with the nowadays, technology is so big, social media is so big. Yeah, I have something readily available that you can send at a snap of a finger. But other than that, find an AAU team that's to go to the best events that you can have success on your team on, whether you're the star player or you have a significant role, you play with other really good players, find a team that you can have success in and um, go to the best events. And then besides that, just send out your film with as many coaches as possible. I mean, there's be quite a few times they don't even open it, they delete it, they watch 10 seconds and turn it off. But if you keep sending your film out to as many schools as possible, you're going to find your perfect fit eventually. Absolutely. And um, you, you say you also coach at Bethany. Uh, when did you start coaching at uh, being assistant coach at Bethany College? Late March this year. So I'm about six months in. How's uh, that process been going? Because I know the season starts next month. How's that been going? Mm-hmm. Getting all the kids, uh, getting all the, the players uh, game ready and stuff, especially with the off season and workouts and potentially like seeing other players from our high schools coming up and doing visits and stuff. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, it's been going really well so far. We're really looking forward to this season. The program, historically speaking, is really has been really, really good. I mean, we lead our conference in championships and tournament appearances in the NCAA. So, historically speaking, we're a really good basketball school, but the last five, six years have struggled tremendously. So, we're looking to rebuild, you know, the culture, bring back the tradition. Um, the whole coaching staff's brand new. So we took over, we're taking over a three and 22 team, which, you know, sounds really bad. Like, I mean, it's a three and 22 is not a good record by any means, but we returned, you know, handful plus guys. We were really good players. I mean, our top four scores from last year are back. Um, Three of them are sophomores. One's a junior. We brought in a pretty good recruiting class too. I mean, three, four of those guys look ready to place big time minutes right now for us. So, we're going to start moving the needle for the better. And hopefully you know, this year shows significant improvement and by year two, year three can compete for a conference title. Gotcha. And I know you say you did work for Outwork and now you are with mm-hmm. Hoop Tech. Um, where are you going to be doing in that? Yeah. So with Outwork, I started it when I was 19. So it was kind of sad to, you know, kind of not get rid of, but essentially the brand and business I started from the ground up, but with Hoop Tech, um, it's going to be the same mission. We're just doing everything out of the Hoop Tech facility, west side of Cleveland. Honestly, probably one of the nicest facilities in the entire region, nonetheless, the Cleveland area. So there's be a lot of really high-level people on board, too. Our staffs be full of current and former college coaches. And, um, you know, got to look to do the same thing we did at work, but expand it a little bit, try and get high-level players, help them get to college. 
coach him hard and just try to leave a, um, you know, positive note for um, AAU culture and high school players in the area. Okay. And I noticed you said at the jump you played basketball for Rittman. Uh, how did the team do during your entire uh, – during your high school career there? Because I know you guys were Division Four, one of the smallest divisions in Ohio. Right. So when I was a freshman, sophomore, and junior, honestly, all three of those years, we were a bad team. We won four games, five games, and nine games. You know, so my first – three years won 18 games total and like playing division three division four basketball sometimes don't get the greatest competition but my senior year we won 17 games i mean it was just um you know just a bunch of guys who were consistent and just kept working i mean we were voted to be last in the conference my senior year and you know we had a group of guys a lot of upperclassmen good junior class a couple sophomores that you know didn't care what anyone thought of us we just kept our head down knew how good we um how good we could be and how hard we worked and um you know our coach was incredible i mean he was the division four coach of the year the year after i graduated and you know had a really great run so coach bever um i mean he was head coach there for five years year one won four games year five won i think like 22 or 23 and went to the elite eight so you know it was I mean, getting your butt kicked for three years in a row isn't fun, but senior year getting to win a lot of games made it all worth it. That's amazing. Uh, how far did uh, you guys go? I noticed you say you won 17 games. How far did you guys go in the tournament? We lost in the district semi to Oberlin. Oberlin that year had a really, really good team. They were defending district champs, and they lost nobody from their roster. So had a good my senior year went really, really well. And then the year after I graduated, they went to um, either the Elite Eight or Sweet 16, and they lost to Cornerstone Christian. And that year they had – that was Michael Bothwell's senior year. So yep. and I lost know. to some talented dudes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Cornerstone Christian is uh, definitely one of those teams in D4 that's on the map. You got Richmond Heights as well, the rise of them. Then Mogador out by me, where I stay at. Mogador has been to the Final Four in recent history. Definitely can't sleep, especially can't sleep on some of those smaller basketball schools. That you there's oh, yeah. five ones there, the WCAL. I believe mm-hmm. that's where Richmond plays. Correct. And um, I was going to say, um, what are you looking forward to as far as in the future for basketball? Do you potentially plan on playing professionally or being a head coach eventually? Yes, I want to be a head coach at the collegiate level at some point. I don't know what level exactly. Um, I'm just looking to just continue to get better, continue to have fun, and just leave an impact every day. I mean, right now I'm at Bethany, so trying to leave a positive impact on the Bethany men's basketball program every day. And um, just come in and do my job, get better, and then when it's time to take the next step, take the next step, and then, you know, repeat from there. Awesome. Danny, thank you for coming on and coming on to the program. And you guys can watch, you can follow along, and you can listen to Tapped In with Tony on Spotify, Apple, and wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also follow on YouTube at Tapped In with Tony. Thank you guys for tuning in.